The emu is Australia's tallest native bird, and the second worldwide after the ostrich, can reach near 2 meters, weighing around 50 kilograms. They may be flightless, but by golly they can run. With their powerful legs, emus can reach speeds of 50 kilometers per hour. The main habitats of the emu are sclerophyll forest and savanna woodland, very common on the outback. Breed in winter and the chicks, named stripes, are reared by the male from the incubation, that is the only social behavior that can be observed. Sometimes they can be seen in big numbers drinking in ponds, individually. Emus eat fruits, seeds, growing shoots of plants, insects, other small animals, here picking flowers on trees. The emu is found only in Australia and is immortalized on the coat of arms together with the kangaroo. The southern cassowary is Australia's heaviest bird, weighing up to 76 kilograms. It reaches 1.8 meters in height, he comes second only to emus, and are also polyandric, the male rear the chicks. There are three species, one in Australia. The southern cassowary's dense, jet black plumage allows it to blend into a dark rainforest environment, keep dry and protected from thorny plants. Cassowaries are tropical forests birds inhabiting the northeast areas of Queensland and the population is estimated in 1500 to 3000 individuals. Cassowaries are frugivores and eat fruit that has fallen to the ground. The birds are considered keystone species because of their role as a major seed disperser of up to 238 rainforest species. Without cassowaries, those rainforests would not be able to survive. Habitat destruction and fragmentation are the main causes of the cassowary's dramatic decline. After cyclones, cassowaries venture closer to human settlements, and this makes them more vulnerable to existing threats, especially dog attacks and collisions with vehicles. Satin bowerbirds are endemic to eastern Australia, they feed mostly on fruit and insects. They are renowned for decorating their bowers with all matter of blue objects collected from the vicinity of the bower. In the past, satin bowerbirds used to collect a variety of natural blue or green items, but nowadays it is almost blue plastic objects, easier to find as garbage in most human settlements. The male satin bowerbird is perhaps the best known of all the bowerbirds in Australia. Younger males and females are similar in color to each other and are collectively referred to as green birds. The male works most of the year building, decorating and maintaining a structure of sticks glued together with a mixture of saliva and vegetable matter, the bower. He must be vigilant 24-7 due to the intrusion of male juveniles practicing their skills or the attack of rivals, adults, and related bowerbirds that steal straws or trash the bow like this regent hummingbird does, simply to try to scare him from the area. On the arrival of a female, the male satin bowerbird leaps into a ritualized display of exaggerated movements, such as strutting and bowing, with wings outstretched and quivering and accompanied by a variety of mechanical sounding calls, such as buzzing and rattling interspersed with mimicry. 
It has to be a perfect bower and display to satisfy the female. Only way to be chosen to father the next brood, raised only by the female. The duties of the male end with the mating, like in many other species of birds. The laughing kookaburra is the largest of the kingfishers in the world, but does not eat fish. Got its name from the loud territorial sound that it makes. It owns a large bill that has a black upper mandible and a tan lower one, and instantly recognizable in both plumage and voice. Eats anything, from the smallest insects to lizards, venomous snakes and offsprings of other birds in nests. They build the nest in a tree hole or a termite's nest on a tree. Pairs bond for life and young chicks are cared by all members of the family. When the chicks are born, the female enters the nest to feed them. The male feeds from the outside. Prey star getting big when growing up. In the end, when the day arrives, they do not feed them and call from the outside to precipitate their flight. After they are out, are fed for a while, females might rest with their parents to help on the next brood. Laughing kookaburras are fairly adaptable in their habitat, but they do require forest areas for finding food and nesting. As small carnivores, Kookaburras play an integral role in the ecosystem by controlling small animal populations. The noisy miner is a native Australian honey eater, often mistaken for the common miner, an invasive species. He has two close cousins though, one is the yellow-throated miner, the other is the bell miner or bell bird. If you live in Eastern Australia, chances are you're pretty familiar with this bird. While they are technically a type of honey eater and love to eat nectar, they will also eat will eat many sorts of food. Their ability to be almost omnivorous and the exaggerated territoriality they exhibit may explain why they are so successfully spread all over the east of Australia. The female constructs the nest and incubates the eggs alone, but both parents will care for and feed the young birds. Additional helpers usually also feed the young. Interestingly, these helpers are almost always male birds. The straw-necked ibis is widespread across much of the Australian mainland as well as other regions outside the continent. The name comes from the yellow throat plumes on its neck. It also has a glossy blue-black back and wings with metallic shine colors. The straw-necked ibis has earned its nickname of farmer's friend by feeding on grasshoppers and locusts. The glossy ibis has a widespread international range, but has encountered a niche also in Australia. 
It gets its glossy title from an iridescent green and purple gloss that is visible in the right lighting. Feeds mostly on ponds and wetlands. The more widely known ibis is the Australian white ibis, once believed to be related to the African sacred ibis, but it is an Australian native bird. They tend to be opportunistic scavengers, are spread in urban areas like pigeons are in other main cities in the world. Here's some shots in parks and wetlands with its natural behavior. The striking colors, his aggressive territorial behavior, the high-pitched sounds, make the rainbow lorikeet unique, unmistakable among all species of Australian parrots, the real joker of the avian world. The rainbow lorikeet is found in a wide range of treed habitats on the east coast of Australia, including rainforest and woodlands, as well as in well-treed urban areas. The rainbow lorikeet mostly forages on the flowers of shrubs or trees to harvest nectar and pollen, but they also eat fruits, seeds and some insects. Rainbow lorikeet are seen in pairs, as most parrots, and defend their feeding and nesting areas aggressively against other rainbow lorikeets and other bird species. The rainbow lorikeet appears to have benefited from artificial feeding stations and prolific fruiting and flowering trees and shrubs. Rainbow lorikeets are sweet affectionate birds that are known for their comical antics and friendly personalities. In general, these birds are friendly, easy to socialize, great entertainers of the avian world. The galah is an unmistakable cockatoo native to Australia. The pink, rose, grey colours and its behaviour are unique. The galah has a head crest that fans out when the bird is frightened, excited or calling out for attention, sometimes accompanied by a resonating screech. The name galah means fool or clown in the native Australian language Uwalarai. Galahs are spread all over the continent in timberland habitats and are common in parks and gardens. Can be seen in flocks pairs or family groups. Galahs are commonly feeding on seeds and grass roots. The pair builds the nest in a hole in a tree, normally very high. Eclectus parrot is a native of Australia and some countries of Southeast Asia. 
The eclectus is the most distinctive example of sexual dimorphism in the bird world. In fact, for many years, biologists believed that male and female to be two different species. The male is mainly green, while the female is a bright, ruby red. The female is mostly in the nest when breeding, while the male is looking for food. The green color camouflages him from predators. Males are polygamous and females polyandrous, meaning that both copulate with several of the opposite sex. A strategy proven successful for the survival of many species of birds. The sulfur-crested cockatoo is a relatively large white cockatoo found in wooded habitats in Australia, New Guinea, and Indonesia. It has a dark grey-black bill, a distinctive sulfur-yellow crest, and a yellow wash on the underside of the wings. The screech of the sulfur-crested cockatoo can be heard in many parts of eastern and northern Australia. They are found in a variety of timbered habitats and are common around human settlements. The birds stay in the same area all year round. The sulfur-crested cockatoo's normal diet consists of berries, seeds, nuts and roots. It also takes handouts from humans and are easily attracted to feeders. The nest is made in a suitable tree hollow, which is prepared by both parents. As with other parrots, they are very picky choosing their nest holes, taking considerable time, roundups and tries, till they finally settle in one. The Major Mitchell's cockatoo is a small, largely white cockatoo with pink on the sides of its head, around its neck, on its underbody, and under its wings. The crest appears white when folded, but when raised and spread it has a broad red band with a yellow stripe through the middle. Major Mitchell's cockatoos are omnivorous, eating the seeds of grasses, shrubs and trees, as well as roots and bulbs, and insect larvae. These are taken from the ground or while perched in plants. Major Mitchell's cockatoos often occur in flocks, but unlike the other species, these flocks are seldom large. They are a feast for the eyes and a joy to watch in the outback.
Rosellas are colorful parrots from Australia, in a genus that consists of six species. The four most commonly seen are described in the video. The green rosella is only found in Tasmania. It has a dark mottled color on its upper body with a striking yellow head and belly that is very obvious when it is flying. The plumage of the eastern rosella is especially vividly colored red and yellow with blue, green and black. Despite their bright colors, their plumage is patterned so that it creates an extremely effective camouflage. Pale-headed rosellas feed mainly on the ground, but also in trees and shrubs. They feed more often in shade than in sunlight. They also frequent feeders. The crimson rosella is probably the most easily recognized rosella, with its red, blue, and black coloring. It makes a characteristic cussic cussic call. It is seen feeding on the ground and frequenting feeders. We were lucky to catch one feeding on apples near the Ebea Falls. The mulga parrot is endemic to arid scrublands and lightly timbered grasslands in the interior of Australia. The male is multicolored, from which the older common name of many colored parrot is derived. Here observed a flock drinking on a pond in the outback. The Australian ringneck is a large parrot, differing in size and plumage in different regions. There are four subspecies in two main groups. All are mostly green with an obvious yellow band on the hind neck. Blue bonnets live in arid and semi-arid areas on plains with low shrub layers such as saltbush and sometimes scattered trees or open woodland. Filmed in the outback. The princess parrot is one of Australia's least known parrots because it is so elusive, even though it is spread across the interior of Australia. This species was filmed in an aviarium in Alice Springs. Book's parrot is a small parrot, which is mostly grey-brown above and pinkish below. It has a prominent area of white around the eyes, giving a spectacled appearance. The yellow-tailed black cockatoo is a large cockatoo found from South Australia to central eastern Queensland, while the red-tailed black cockatoo is found in mainland states. This one was filmed in Kakadu. The cockatiel is now classified as the smallest of the cockatoo family. They are native to Australia, widespread in the interior of the continent. 